news and rumors that appeal. Welcome to the dust. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, before I bring my guests in, who are a lot of fun, they've been here with us before, we're going to be talking new readers and the Dragon Reborn. But before that happens, I want to remind you of a few things that are coming up here on the channel. First of all, actually, uh, my friend and I, Brian, at Barside Chats, we have a podcast. We had the great honor to interview our favorite author here, Margaret Weiss. Uh, she was amazing this Saturday, and expect the actual podcast itself to land sometime, I would say, here, uh, probably Thursday. Think Thursday. It was amazing. We can't wait to share it with you. That was so much fun. Now, as a reminder, this upcoming Wednesday, we're back here at the Inn with our episode, Becoming Perrin. These episodes have been really popular. Uh, they've been a lot of fun. We're going to have Lesby Nerdy, as many of you know her, and Corey Lansdell. He's going to be here with us, along with Jenny, and we're going to be talking all about Marcus Rutherford. We can't wait to do that. And for this, Corey has been running a giveaway, and he, he actually drew this uh, young bull, I think is what he's calling it, and he's giving that away, and we're going, to, we're going to have a drawing live on Wednesday, but you only have until the end of the day tomorrow to get that. Now, he did send me this awesome time lapse. I'm gonna show it to you. It's just one minute long of the drawing itself. Enjoy this. Now, if you want an opportunity to win that drawing, a print of that, make sure you go over to Corey's uh, Instagram page. You'll see the post, and I think you just have to like it, share it, and tag a couple friends. You have until the end of the day tomorrow. Make sure to go check that out. And one last note before we begin the show here. We told everyone this Wednesday, but if you weren't at our episode then, we are actually starting something new here at the Dusty Wheel, but not here on YouTube. It's going to be on Twitch. Yeah, the first ever watch parties from the Dusty Wheel. We're going to be watching the works of the cast and crew of the Wheel of Time and Amazon Prime together on Twitch here from the Dusty Wheel. It's going to be a lot of fun. Have a discussion about those shows as we're watching them. It's going to be a blast. We're going to start this tomorrow. It's going to be a little beta first Expect the first episode tomorrow. It's going to be a work in progress, but we can't wait to do this. And we're doing some giveaways. If you want to go be one of our first 500 followers over on Twitch, you'll find us at the Dusty Wheel on Twitch. We're going to do some giveaways. Like I said, some, so we're going to raffle off some mugs and some other swag and maybe a, a watch party giveaway. That'll be a lot of fun. So make sure that you go follow us and think about showing up tomorrow night. Think 8 p.m. Eastern. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait to do more watch parties. We've already started laying out a schedule of those, and we'll share that schedule here over the next week. So just make sure to follow us on social media, and you'll keep up with that. Now, that being said, those are all of our announcements. Let's get to our show tonight. It's all a new readers episode. We do this rarely at the Dusty Wheel. And so I'm so glad 
to reintroduce my guest tonight. Welcome to the Dusty Wheel, Danny and Brett from the Wheel Wheels podcast. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. We're so excited to be here. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Back. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for having us back. So yep. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to have you. This is this is so chill uh, for me tonight. You know, it's a Sunday night, and I get to ask a lot of fun questions. <laughs> to, <laughs> and, and we just get to talk, and I don't have to worry about editing or anything. We just get to have chat about real time. I'm and excited. I normally don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So as a reminder, if you're watching us for the first time here, we're a live call and talk show. We'll open the phone lines probably sometime about the next 30 minutes. So you can call if you have a question, but just remember if you're in live chat or you are calling us, this is supposed to be a non-spoiler episode. Nothing past the Dragon Reborn. That's the whole point of the night. We're just gonna have a lot of fun, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. Keep that in mind, like I said, in the chat and when you call tonight, no spoilers. Yeah. And that that being said, so let's just jump into it. Uh, first of all, it, the Dragon Reborn, you're done with this. What were your reactions? Just give me, Danny, your initial reactions to reading the Dragon Reborn. Right. Okay. So full disclosure, today I had to sit down and go through the Great Hunt and the Dragon Reborn. I had to like distinguish between what happened in book two and book three and i have no idea how people who have read 14 books yeah, i keep telling her it's gonna get worse and <laughs> yeah. worse as it goes on like, like i'm <laughs> already mixing up things so i had to really be like okay what happened in dragon reborn but um what i initially thought of the dragon reborn was the first half was really slow and boring and parent based. And if, you are, <laughs> if you are new to me <laughs> and you're a parent fan sorry um uh, what I have to say, though, is my first reaction is it was pretty slow and there was this pickup and then everything happens all at once in like the last two thirds of the book. And it was super cool. Yeah, it, it was kind of funny from my perspective, because I get like a whole nostalgia run every time we get to talk about the chapters, because if anyone doesn't know, I've read the books a bunch of times. She hasn't. So it's like her first time experience. But the beginning of the dragon reborn she first started saying oh i'm pretty sure ran's gonna be in this book a lot and then uh, <laughs> we know that he's like in a chapter and a half tops yeah so we get like a paragraph perspective yeah and those perspectives are awful yeah, it's not good i think ran's my least favorite character in this book like interesting yeah yeah well it's it, so you named two people so you yeah. said perrin boring and yeah. now you said ran least favorite so now i need to know like who comes out of the Dragon Reborn for you? Like this character is either continues to be one of my favorite or is now like a new favorite. Okay. So definitely Matt. So Matt from okay. the beginning, I've always. She's got a crush on him. I, it, 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 it happens. Yeah. It, it happens. I think he's so interesting, entertaining. And I know the first two books were really cursed, daggery Matt. And he was like kind of awful. And you just, I just sort of felt for him because it wasn't his fault and all that stuff but oh man dragon <laughs> reborn matt he won he won my heart for sure like my favorite favorite scenes all have to do with matt in them so okay so uh, so but is that how much has that transitioned after book one and two for you has it just been a kind of a slow climb were there kind of yeah. peaks in that or is it just yeah, now so it, it feels like that's going forever at this point yeah <laughs> yeah, I, look, just because I get to kind of dissect this too. Mm -hmm. it, she I had an attachment with Matt from the get go. Yeah, because I it's thought like he was the, so funny. Yeah, and she likes that, right? So it's, it's the playful, it's like, like the badger, like the whole nine yards sure. of Matt. Well, even the Matt stealing the dagger, it's crazy irresponsible. It's so wild and it's not okay. But those are the types of characters I enjoy reading about. Right. When I'm reading, I'm reading for entertainment, unpredictability you know, things that you don't normally get to see. So, I mean, so far with Perrin, the reason she's got such an aversion there is he's so logical and, you know, cookie cutter. I don't cutter. need to read three pages on you <laughs> thinking about what to do next. It's just like no, yeah. impulsive. And those are the things that are really exciting and you don't know what's coming next. And it's a page turner, right? Those are the things that get me when I read, so. Interesting. So yeah, Perrin's almost like too adult for you at this point, you know, he's just too... Yeah, he, he's, he's making way too much sense. But you know, I like... do have to say, <laughs> I have a full distinguish between Perrin and Young Bull. And uh, I yeah. really like oh, Young Bull. Interesting. Who's like, okay. 
really exciting. Let's kill some white cloaks. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And uh, gotcha. Yeah. So the version of Perrin that was in Corey's drawing, you didn't see that, but yeah, Corey's drawing is called Young Bull. That's the one you like. That's that's an interesting observation. I don't know that I've ever really split the two as far as which one I've liked or not. So I like that you have. Yeah. I like that you have this kind of, like I, I you like to see what the transformation kind of does or brings to Perrin as a character. Yeah, that's a that's <laughs> that's really interesting. Other than Matt, did you have any kind of surprises? I mean, Matt sounds like he was just kind of uh, always kind of a growing enjoyment, but were there any yes, surprises sure. to you? So my biggest surprise and turnaround was Celine slash Lanfear. Okay. So I really hated, hated Celine. And I know that that's a pretty popular opinion. Like right away, you're supposed to be skeptical of this beautiful woman in the middle of a alternate universe. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. right. <laughs> cautionary who tale. seems to just like know yeah. way too much like that you know you're supposed to i think be a little wary of her and i really hated her oh i'm just this girl from Kyrie and act yeah i didn't buy it i was like hey tell me who you are stop trying to fool around but like, you don't I, like the playing dumb you like the yeah. land fear and then she like switches <laughs> gears we get to the end of the great hunt and into the dragon reborn with landfear being pretty badass yeah, yeah, very much so. And I just like this affinity for her really grew. And then now I feel like it's crazy irresponsible to have one of my favorite characters be a Forsaken. It's and not. the crazy ex-girlfriend. It's yeah. not irresponsible. <laughs> it's okay. It's and, actually and very I've logical. Had some people, <laughs> I've had some people tell me about your love for Lanfear. That's and right. And they actually call you Manfear. Yeah, so, they do. Wow. I didn't yeah. realize it had made it that far, but oh, that's good to know. Up. It's good to know it that it's made it, it made it to you. <laughs> so we have to see Matt in a beautiful white dress is what I want. I, w I just want to know how much Nablus has paid you to to make the statement at the early part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Matt yes, uh, yeah. the, the agreement for people that are watching, the agreement is if, this ch if and when this channel ever hits 50,000 subscribers, and we're really far from it, but if it ever did... I would dress up there. for an episode um, of Man Fear. That's right. Perfect. Man Fear at the Dusty Wheel. It. So, yeah. Man Fear? <laughs> I love it. Yes, exactly. I love that Man Fear has made this out. Thank you. Thank you, Nablus. <laughs> Let's all make some calls to our extended families and make this happen. Right? Everyone subscribe. How many cousins yeah, do you have? Lots. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. I, I see hashtag man fear for Watt on prime in, a, in the, in the chat here. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that land fear is certainly uh, someone that I, yeah, I, I came to appreciate her probably around the same time. I think it was, yeah, maybe as the great hunt went on and then obviously the dragon reborn is somewhere that I really came to appreciate that character. Yeah, so I, probably I like, when she like pops in on Matt while he's like healing drop some knowledge bombs on him and then like leaves and then like goes and like tricks the girls into doing something that I don't even understand. Like, it was all great. <laughs> it's all pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with that. And so that's really interesting that that one has grown on you. Anyone else that stands out. So by the way, loving this Dragon Reborn, your favorite so far are Matt and Lanfear. I'm not sure that you can go, <laughs> yeah. uh, you can't go wrong here, but, but now, so is there anyone else that has really kind of piqued your either curiosity or interest at this point? Well, the biggest peak in curiosity, I think, would be Min. But the issue with the Dragon Reborn is we see her at the beginning and she takes off for um, the White Tower. Mm -hmm. And then we just, like, don't hear from her ever again. And so Gone. that's something that yeah. I was so, so, so <laughs> curious about. And every time I read, I was like, where's Min? What's going on? How long does it take to get to Tar Valid? And well, I was like just... considering we left on such a big cliffhanger from the Great Hunt when she and Rand seem to maybe have a thing going on and then right. don't, but maybe do, like who knows? Yeah, and, and we definitely... You just never see her, so... Yeah, and we left with her basically telling Perrin that she loves Rand and she's like, what is happening here? And then she's gone. <laughs> yeah, so, so tell me, so that's a good, this is a good transition point to this question then. There are lots of characters. There's lots of yep. plots going on right now. Yep. What's what's your overall reaction? This has been a, a trilogy, right, at this point yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that Robert Jordan has too many plots going on? Or do you like the quantity by this point, number of plots and intrigue that's, that's happening? Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting question. Because yeah. the only other series I've read that even remotely compares is 
obviously a song of ice and fire which i didn't even finish i got like three and a half books in you're not the only one who hasn't finished <laughs> <that>. yeah <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Exactly. but that's like similar where you're switching perspectives kind of thing mm -hmm. and but way fewer i think yeah, yeah so i don't know that's an interesting question because they never really considered oh no another character or another perspective like that's never anything i've I think yeah. one of the toughest parts sometimes is like when you're waiting to hear back from someone and it's not that person in the next perspective and you have no idea yes. when it's going to come mm -hmm. and it yeah. only gets worse. Yeah. But I mean, that's part of, that's part of the fun, right? Hey, yeah. hey, no spoilers, Brett. Yeah. No spoilers. Well, come on. There's 50. <laughs> well, and I have to say at the beginning right. of The Dragon Reborn, we get that there's this like tinker who comes in and then she just like dies. And then you never hear about the tinkers again. No tinkering. No tinkers tinkering no pots tinkering. yeah it's like yeah. there's nothing nothing so, so yeah yeah so that's yeah that's and i want to ask everyone that's in chat here that's watching this with us you know for you the same question you know when it came to the by the end of the dragon reborn did you feel like there were too many plots or did, was it kind of just it was really intriguing and interesting to you so thumbs up if you liked the amount number of characters and number of plots that were here yeah. thumbs down if you thought that it was starting to get even out of hand by the end of the Dragon Reborn. I'm kind of curious what chat's going to say about that. So I'll bring that in. I just, yeah. I just want to throw my my uh, opinion into the pot here. Just I think that Robert Jordan, like I, I'll always be on Robert Jordan's side for storytelling because it's fantastic. You can't tell me otherwise. But he eases you into things so smoothly. Like he brings you into this gigantic universe one chapter at a time, right from like small town Emmons Field, like brings you out to the next biggest town and then the next and then the next. And he like opens up the world. But same with the plot perspectives. We start with like 90% Rand and you get a just a taste of other perspectives until he finally gets you like every chapter you're like expecting to get into someone else's head. And when you're when you're in the same head, you're like, why haven't we switched yet? But that's my that's my feelings on it. Yeah, no, yeah. I think that's I think that's good. And and what I'm seeing in chat is basically all thumbs up. Everyone's so for I, it. Yeah, it's I great. think everyone is feeling as readers at this point. Like you, I think you just brought that. You said it really well, Brett. This I say the idea that at first it was just kind of very few people. Yeah. And now by the by the transition of the Dragon Reborn, <laughs> like Tanny pointed out, it's like where did Rand go? You know. Yeah. And it's almost like I almost feel like in some way Robert Jordan removed Rand somewhat, so he didn't have to be in his point of view. Mm -hmm. because when Rand's there you want to be in his head you yeah. know and yeah. when um, he's when he's not there <laughs> maybe okay, not so, the dragon reborn in nope. his head he's a little <laughs> nuts and I'm not for murdering dogs and animating mm. dead bodies so like I could have done without to each their own yeah. you know <laughs> Okay, so now that, that's a great, again, uh, yeah, this is a great moment to ask you about that. So where are you at, Danny? So this is Rand, end of the Dragon Reborn. How are you feeling about where he's at? So... Are we talking like, you know, mental stability? Like, yeah, just like just your... Like your or like taint madness or just like... No, just like your I, feeling about Rand at this point. You know, like where do you think he's at, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah good question because throughout when things were happening brett was, kept asking me do you think this is like the taint madness setting in or do you think that this is something else like and i kept calling it situational madness because he'd been isolated in the mountains all winter right just knowing that people are dying and whatever in his name mm -hmm. and he's somebody who just like hates that number one he goes off and then he's like on his own traveling for days people probably, are trying to murder him probably starving <laughs> right. pro not, definitely not sleeping and so there's a lot of things where he's like ah they're chasing me but is it the taint madness or is it like the situational yeah like stress anybody pressure, might right? be yeah. kind of feeling off in well, yeah, same... I mean, that, well, that, he, they talks about that, right? He, he, I think we get a little moment in his head where he's like, he is, he's being hounded, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he doesn't well, know then... who to trust, right? And, and he, and he, and yeah. he does, he's not even sure if he kills people in, you know, if it's real or not when he does, he just knows that to defend himself, he's going to, you know, it seems like it's that's not where his good. Head's at, it's you know? not good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
so I think so that's the decline of Rand for her too. It's like it's it's harder and harder to like be on Rand's side and be like, yeah, you go, Rand. When he's now like, it's like oh. murdering farm dogs, <laughs> or were they? What are they? I want to say hounds. Shadow Brother, Dark Hounds. <laughs> Yeah. Is it, right? Well, because that's yeah. another point people have brought up, and they're like, "Well, was it really just farm dogs?" Because we got that there were. I lost it again. Dark hands. Dark hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have shadow brothers in my head. Apparently, I'm a wolf. So. <laughs> that's, Who are you? Yeah, but we have got that they were pursuing in that area. Yeah. So. So well, tell me this, Brett. Uh, for me, at least, as we're doing, we do a live adaptation of the books and how we would kind of transition them to like the TV show. We're like, we get to sure. play, you know, we get to play this whole idea of we're in Rafe's head and you know, let's, and we do that show here at the Dusty Wheel. And I think uh, right now we're in the Dragon Reborn. I've realized as I read each book, it becomes my favorite in that moment. <laughs> Has that yeah. happened to you? Yeah. Like, you know I mean? You've read how many times, remind the audience how many times you've actually read through the through the books themselves. Like I never kept count, but it's, it's gotta be upwards of like a dozen ish, if okay. not more, but only because like every time a new book would get released. Cause I started reading these long, long time ago. You reread the entire series every time the book is going to come out and he right. got to a year or two and it's like, well, what I'm also am I going to read? Yeah. So. And I also just want to call you out a little bit because when we started <laughs> two years ago, yeah. I feel like you used to say eight or nine. I have no, it's, it's <laughs> nine nine. Nine. So you definitely haven't it's read inflated. the whole it's I yeah. get a bonus read for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That, yeah. I, I agree with that. So I know that people ask. I, kept, yeah. I know. <laughs> I kept track but of. still it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. People ask me the same <laughs> question. Had, and, like, I have the same problem. I, I didn't keep track of it. And so I know that I have not read the later books, for example, as many times as earlier books. But okay, yeah, that's probably fair too. So, yeah. So I would, you know, when people say how many times, it's like, well, it would be like a, a scale. Which book? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like the eye of the world, so many times, you know, yeah, and then every like every book after times. that's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, so this... I've already reread the eye of the world. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> You're already at like two. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Uh, no, so tell me this, Brett. So as you read through the Dragon Reborn, did you come to appreciate anything else that's non-spoilerish, but that you can share with us about this book that you hadn't noticed before, or, or um, did it become more favorite than it was prior? I agree with the whole like when you're in the moment, every scene and every chapter, like everything becomes your favorite because you're reliving it over and over again. Um, specifics that I that I have pulled out is going to be really hard for me to come up with on the spot. Yeah. But I will say that I for sure have pulled more out of the book series by doing it so in detail. Just stuff that, I mean, usually when you read it, you just read it and then keep going. But the way we're doing it, it's like we read it, we take notes on it, we critically analyze it and we record it and we edit and we listen to it over and over again. So it's like the stuff we're pulling out is way more than I ever got out of it. And then talking about the series, like I never really had an in-depth conversation about the Wheel of Time before doing this, except with like a handful of buddies, you know, conversationally. Right. But yeah, I get a lot. And I think she's picking up so much more just as a first time reader too than I ever did because yeah just the way we're doing when we it. started people accused me of not being a first-time reader oh yeah like, yeah <laughs> I was like, no <laughs> what, a, what a strange yeah it's like you're yeah. not actually a first-time reader i like that that's a yeah that yeah. sounds like well, a very was, wheel we, of time thing started, just because i'm getting some predictions <laughs> yeah. right like come on everyone <laughs> we, we're doing two chapters at a time for, per episode so yeah. she doesn't read past but when we started it was one chapter at a time oh for the, yeah. like pretty much the entire first season for yeah. the first book yeah so it's like when you go over each chat, like 10 pages, whatever it's going to be with a comb, you're going to start seeing things. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm that's picking out. I'm like looking for things to pick out because I want to like impress Brett. Right, like, right, right, right. I caught that. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> that's that's an interesting point because, yeah. you know, as I wasn't reading it like that when I was younger. And so I probably no. didn't notice things <laughs> until a third <laughs> read that you're noticing that Danny's noticing now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I might have read it the third time and going like, oh, that's what he said. Just this. starting to pick up. Yeah. 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 And so it's funny because and I'll even like open an old book and like a piece of paper will drop out and I'll just see like names and stuff <laughs> and things that I wrote in there. Uh, because, yeah. you know, you didn't have when I was reading it. It's not like we had okay, this is to date me when I first started reading. No Internet. OK, so like, uh, <laughs> like I didn't. And it wasn't like we had like awesome computers at the time. So it's not like I yeah, yeah. was taking notes. It was just pen and paper and whatever I thought was interesting. So it is really funny because I've watched a lot of new reader podcasts. You know, The Wheel Reads, for example, also does this. And I'll listen to predictions. And it's the hardest thing to just be like, 
you look that up on the internet. You know, <laughs> yeah. in my head, it's like, how did you, how are you guessing this? But, but it yeah. does, it, it makes a difference when you stop and read it, you know, and, and sit there and kind of like really, really in detail do it. So oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that, that, that's fantastic uh, and, and fun for you. And I'm sure, so let's, let's jump to that. Uh, okay. When it comes to predictions. Yeah. Tell the audience here that's watching, you know, from the first three, this you, you read the first three at this point. What is what has Danny gotten right? Or Dan and Danny, you can jump in and throw something that where you feel like this I got right. I predicted this a long time ago and this turned out right. for me. Do you have that yeah. list or yeah, go for it. I was hoping you were gonna start with what she got wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> we're, right we're gonna go to the wrong. We're gonna go to the wrong. We're gonna go to the wrong. <laughs> wrong so far. No, no, no. Right first. We're oh. doing rights first. Okay. Right first, and then we'll jump to the I wanna start off positive here, you know. Okay. 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 She predicted that Rand was the dragon reborn. Okay. So pretty sure about that. Well, I feel like everyone <laughs> predicts that. Like that's like a like he's the main character. The but... like description for the show is like Rand's the Dragon Reborn. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it just tells you. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Uh... what do you got? Do you have any of your right predictions? Well, the amount of things that she says, it's not like one. It's like just mm-hmm. she says so many things on and off. Like we've talked about. I mean, Tom and Patton. Oh, Tom not yeah. being dead. Tom not okay. being dead. She never bought for I a second. I never bought for a second. Yeah. Celine being Lanfear. Yeah, she got that right for sure, You know, too. just okay. those types of yeah. guys. I didn't predict Fane. I did, but then I got thrown off. You got hor- – that was horribly wrong. Uh. We were going to get to that. That was one of my favorite, I favorite thought Pat and Fane was dead after Winter Night, but uh, yeah. that's okay. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. She thought I'm. I'm gonna jump to it because it's just okay. too good. Jump to so, you can jump to wrong. You can do that. We'll we'll come back. But anyway, so Pad and Fane. <laughs> she was pretty sure that Pad and Fane was dead under his own wagon, killed on winter night. I love and it. And then had like not even like she was just dead, and she was expecting the villagers to be like crowded around the wagon because everyone because was around was a... the peddler's wagon, and they were all upset. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my god, their peddler that they like so much is dead, and they're yeah. mad at Maureen that was so or something. Good. And then you don't that. get confirmation of anything for so long in the eye of the world yeah. till like the end. You well, get the no, in Berlon Brand sees Fane. So obviously that he's was... acting crazy and stuff. Yeah, but then know, there but... was like the whole is he a good guy, bad guy scenario yeah. for yeah. so long. So but there's a so, lot of ongoing things. Yeah, that. and I would say the other worst prediction I got wrong was Howell Goad in the four in Four Kings. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was more death coming for his day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of speculation. With like Mordeth. I was really a hundred percent sure about that, yeah. and I was. Very well, I want to. I want to ask everybody. So while you're talking, this, I want to hear yeah. more of the wrong ones. They're they're a lot of fun. I, I'm kind of curious for people that are in chat. Again, no spoilers past the Dragon Reborn, but if you're watching with us, you know, and, and you watch this later, and you want to write in the comments, I'd love to hear that too of the video. Which is, you know, do you remember what you predicted that you got yeah, wrong or someone did... said they had no idea who Celine was. You know, I had a couple different theories about Celine. When you first met, I one thought of it was the... like yeah. Moraine in disguise looking out for Rand or something. Mm-hmm. I had cr- like wild theories. So, <laughs> That's good. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, or maybe a different Aes Sedai Moraine sent to watch out for Rand somehow in this world. But Lanfear was the one that stuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. That's it. And it's funny. Cause I can't uh, honestly, I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> but I, I, for those of you that do know, I'd love to hear what you got wrong and what you got right by the end of The Dragon Reborn. It's just a, it's a really fun. And, and for those of you that have never watched or listened to a new reader podcast, to me, that is the most, that's the most fun. You know, Danny, when yeah. you do this and uh, when the guys at Will Reads do this, they, they start talking about like things that got wrong or things they're predicting. And there's just this moment, I don't know what it is as a, as a reader of the books. I'm just like, Oh, so close, you know, or, yeah. you know, <laughs> Ali, you know, Ali's so fun. Ali and Gus, they're fun to uh, listen to also. And, you know, Ali will throw things out and I'll be like, uh, no, Oh, but Oh, wow. You know, whatever, you yeah. know, it's like, that's that being able to listen to that as someone that's already read the books. It's still fun. It's still a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah. So yeah, we had a fun, say, we had a fun date night with Ali and Gus. Yeah, we did. We did a, we did a event, bonus so. episode with Ali and Gus. That yeah. was a double date night. That was also fun. <laughs> That's awesome. But, yeah, yeah. Um, for the Dragon Reborn specifically, I remember the thing I got the most wrong. If <laughs> it was when I thought that Nynaeve, Elaine, and Egwene were going to go heal Matt. Yeah. I thought that yeah. Swan was going to decide 
not to heal him and just be like, oh, whoops. I'm not know? killing him. I'm letting him die. Because yeah, that was like a big point of contention. Because he's like the horn sound or whatever. So yeah. it's like tough to whatever. So I thought they were going to decide to just like, eh, I'll get to him. Yeah. Whoops, he's already dead. That's what I thought the Aes Sedai were scheming. And then the pattern was going to pull strings because they didn't want Matt dead. And then Nynaeve and Elena and Egwene were going to yeah. go somehow because they're super strong. It was a very well thought out. Like They were you somehow yeah. going to figure out how to heal him and like do it. Yeah, in the rules of yeah. Taviranness, it's like the plot armor, whatever you want to call it, to whatever Taviran is. But that it was like really cool. well-structured argument. I'm actually argument. kind of sad that that didn't happen still. Yeah. That's probably the one thing I that didn't happen that I wish did. Yeah. Like I felt like that would have been really cool for the girls to have done because I feel like they're stumbling through these books like morons and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a that, just that. Okay. <laughs> that is a that is a good turn. I want to ask you about that, yeah, but I Yeah, okay. Yeah. I I'm trying to remember now uh we do some Robert Jordan's notes uh, discussions here uh, at the Dusty Wheel and I'm trying to remember if there is anything that would lead me to believe that Jordan thought about that story arc before he and now I want to go back. So I, I'm going to go look and see if there's any. It's I, funny there's... because it, it's set up so that it could happen. Like the amount of times that the three girls think about having to go and just take care of it themselves. They're like literally yeah. on their way to do it. Yeah. When it's like more than once. Jumps in and is like, we need you or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not uncommon. I'll, I'll be totally serious yeah. here. It's not uncommon for Jordan to have, you know, he's signaling something for a long time and then he drops it. And so you yeah. do get this like really hard signal of like, this is, must be true. And then it ends yes. up being false. And you're like, man, that was a red herring. And it's a brilliant yeah. way that he, it's a brilliant way that he writes. It's very well done. I've because... taken to calling them red herrings. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> okay. So now we got to talk about the girls. I want to do that. But I want to remind everybody, this is a live call-in talk show. If you would like to give a, a, us a call, ask Danny and Brett a question, about you know what's been read so far where they're at or just want to express you think they're awesome people that's that's cool too uh you you want to you want to ask us something just remember if you do call us please don't spoil anything from any of the books after the dragon reborn like that's the whole point just to have that little bit of courage courtesy uh but i'm really obviously... fast on my earmuffs so don't don't even worry i got practice <laughs> you got practice you got practice okay yeah. good he like literally <laughs> grabs my head like he like actually earmuffs me <laughs> The, yeah, the number is, just so people that are, the number is 1313-825-5968 or 1313-825-5968 or talk what. That's how you can call us. So love to hear from you. We'll weave you into the conversation that we're having here. Uh, I'll try not to make you wait too long. It looks like we already have one person in the queue. I'll try to let you know if you're trying to call in and how many people are waiting from time to time, just so you know if it's a, you know, it's a good time to do so and give us a call. So now let's get to the girls at this point. It seems like you're not liking what Robert Jordan is doing. And I, I'm going to point out, so we're talking about Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve. Are there That's others right. here or That's that right. grouping? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that group. So speak to that. Okay. So especially in the Dragon Reborn, I feel like they think they're grander than they are. I feel like that's the case. Like their immaturity shows their young age really comes through. We're reminded, oh yeah, they're teenagers, right? Like that's really what it comes back to. They think they know everything when really they know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and nothing. if not teenagers in like actual age, teenagers yeah. in spirit because they've been sheltered in the two rivers their entire lives yeah. and it's like fresh to the world. Yeah. And then you get the petty, like, naive Egwene, you know, typical, you know, girls being angry at each other <laughs> thing. Gotcha, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it was annoying more than anything, I find. And then they just go, like, marching off into this trap that they know is a trap with, like, no plan. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just irresponsible. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's one of the things that we've kind of like discussed a little bit too. Obviously, we're not going to get into the entirety of it, but the other side of that issue is as young and inexperienced as they are, they've also got the downside that every Aes Sedai that has talked to them 
has told them that they're the most powerful channelers that have ever come into being ever ever you're the best you can be the greatest of all time they got big heads and it's like that's gonna happen you look at any like athlete anywhere it's like you're the gonna be the all-star you're gonna play for brazil like when you grow up like whatever it's gonna be <laughs> it was a soccer reference yeah, Sorry, I I was just, like, that's a good yeah, reference like, i understood it i understood it yeah. i was like yeah play for brazil that would be i grew up playing soccer so yeah. like that's the first thing my mind went you to you have to be from brazil <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know best in the world yeah, right yeah, okay. so it's like okay anyways but it's like they get the inflated heads because they're told they're so good all the time and it's like yeah. you kind of get that shield and of invincibility at so like young in the tower they go take their accepted test right like yeah. my knee doesn't even have to be a novice for a minute yeah basically right and so they're right. like yeah we're way better than everyone else <laughs> so, exactly like confirmation in their own heads and mm -hmm. it's like that doesn't help anybody Oh, yeah. that's an interesting way to, you know, I always, I think I always thought that Jordan might have written that not as well as he could have, but There's I like that layer. That, do you think Jordan wrote women well? Well, I think that, I think some of them, and that's what I mean is I might have said maybe some of these characters not so well, but maybe I'm just not giving enough of credit here, which is what you just, the point you just brought up. They have been told, right? They were... They were found by Moraine, right? Uh, they have been kind of, you know, you are the best. You might become this. You're going to do this. You're amazing. You know, you are. And then they were fast forwarded, you know, like, mm -hmm. and let's just, let's raise you now. And, you know, don't worry. You don't have to follow all the customs here. And even though, you know, you left this, we'll just tell a lie what the story is. We'll right. cover for you. Yeah. Here's your pass out of the White Tower. You know what I mean? Like right. well, and then they, also, they've been kind of they've been led down this road of not taking it. Maybe they haven't been. Yeah, they haven't gone through the cauldron a bit there. You know, they've just yeah. kind of gotten a free pass sometimes. And yeah. maybe that that leads to the detriment of things that we see later. But yeah, go ahead, Danny. Right. Well, yeah, what I was going to say to your um you know, kind of skirting the rules a little bit. Like when they run into the Aiel women, the maidens, for the first time in the Dragon Reborn, Egwene immediately is like, I'm full at, like they all pretend, they've been pretending since they left the White Tower that they're full Aja. Like yeah, that, like Aes yeah, yeah. Sedai, I mean, yeah, 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 that they're full Aes Sedai. And so, like right away, that's gonna go to your head. If you have to pretend that you're a real I said I, well, you're just gonna act like you're one, and then eventually that's just gonna. Well, what? I'm I said I. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. then in terms of R.J. writing women well or not, I think it's whether or not he writes characters well. Like, I think that there are some caricatures in the story. Like, they're you know, like Matt, okay. for example, is like. You know, I'd never want to be that guy's friend in real life because he's irresponsible and nuts and I don't know. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. kind of person doesn't attract long-term friends typically. And so. Yeah. Well, how many long-term friends does Matt really have? <laughs> well, he's got his butt. Anyway, but I think that he writes like really strong, like the older powerful women, yeah. it, like in terms okay. of Lanfear, in terms of Moraine, in terms of, you know, maybe even swan like they're written so that they sort of know what's up and they are firm in what they want and what they are going to do to get it and it's not wishy-washy and i like that writing of those women but these characters Nynaeve, Egwene, elaine is like mashed potatoes i just like, <laughs> she's I like, so, that. <laughs> That's great. like when i'm in an elaine perspective i forget i'm in El an elaine perspective like she's so just dull and what's going on here <laughs> i don't know i would yeah. say that my least favorite part is probably um i have my notes here open because i wanted to make sure that i talked about yeah. just getting the dream angry and not telling anybody about it or terangrial what is terangrial. it yeah yeah yep. I want to talk about that part too, which I guess okay. ties in. Yeah. I'm getting so ahead I, of myself probably. No, no, no. So you just brought up something that I, okay. I really love. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me write that down so we don't forget that because that's one okay. of my favorites. Uh, so I want to like, ask all your opinions about the Dream Terror on Grail. So we have yeah. three people waiting to get in. I'm seeing a really a conversation interesting on in chat here. I'm going to throw a comment back to you. We'll bring our first caller in about yeah. his caricatures here. Uh, I don't know the way that he writes from a limited omniscient position, you know, uh, you know, from a storytelling, yeah. you, you're not going to get that kind of narration of everyone's mind. And I'll be honest, 
when I meet, and then this isn't meant to all teens, but when I meet a teen for about five minutes, there's a caricature in my head, right? Yeah. Like they're filling in <laughs> some kind of like, oh, yeah. uh-huh, right. And then, or I meet anybody, but what I mean by, when I say teen is, it's not like I've gone to work and met somebody that's like, oh, I, I know that they've had to do this, this, and this to get to the position they're in. And so there's maybe an assumption of something, you know, uh, I've filled in their life a little bit more than maybe I filled in a younger person's life from my point of view. I think Jordan does that actually very well. He leaves it to the reader to have to kind of fill in the gaps of it. Yeah. And I like that yeah. from a, it's a very human standpoint. It's a very annoying from a reader standpoint because you hate it. Like you said, uh, was it Egwene's mashed potatoes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you know, like <laughs> Elaine, yeah, yeah. Oh, Elaine, yeah, Elaine's Elaine mashed gets potatoes. Yeah. So easily by other characters because she does kind of sit back and observe a lot, right? Like sure. She's not the you know aggressive <laughs> type in your face. Here's Sorry, I just my opinion. I just thought that hashtag only meat, no potatoes. <laughs> this is, I think it's season one. I'm, I think it's related to the, yeah. Anyways, uh, I, I, I agree with that about uh, some of the characters, but I, I think it's just, we don't get enough time in their heads. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. That, and that's you know, fair. And I, you know, I really appreciate the scenes where you're in someone's head in one scene and then the next perspective is in the exact same scene or like a second later. And then it's that scene from someone else's perspective. And it's just, I think, an interesting view on like real life. Yeah. So the way I think and see and experience one thing may be completely different from yeah. somebody else who experienced the exact same situation. They're going to be thinking and seeing and experiencing it different than me right and then there's yep. going to be miscommunication and misunderstandings yeah. all over the place and so that's what i really love about all these characters is they seem so real people for the yeah. most part right yeah, yeah and you do have to fill in you have to fill in some of the gaps uh, and that's yeah. and that might be i know a lot of people have said well, that's a failure of the writing and and it and I don't know from the perspective. <laughs> how of many style how many more not. books do we want here? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's a failure of the writing. I think that that's intentional yeah. because everybody has flaws. How many relationships or friendships do you know that have ended because of miscommunication or misrepresenting the same situation differently, mm -hmm. and no one communicated effectively? Yeah, like that's so real life to me. It's insane. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that happens all the time here. And it's frustrating to read. And you're like, because you know more than the characters know. But I mean, that's the great but, part about the perspective is that it's not like a, you know, the narrative. I don't need, I don't know. I'm not good at the perspectives of what they all mean, but you don't have the almighty perspective. That's yeah. like, this is how Rand views it, whatever, whatever. And this is how it really is. Yep. You get that one perspective. Uh, my example I typically go to is like, I have the world with the whole naive land relationship for some people when you read it into like book two and three you're kind of surprised about it but if you go back in book one it's from it's rand there. it's there but it's rand as like a country boy <laughs> yeah. who doesn't understand it. watching what's people happening. of yeah. course he doesn't pick up on the relationship that's building between lana and I. he's Eve. like oh that's yeah. weird that they're up together yeah but it's like if you're in sleeping if you're in nine huh. or right, right, head, right. it's like immediately you're gonna see that as a yeah. truth so yeah. So I'm going to ask you about that question too. So we're just bringing a caller here. I want to talk about relationships so far. You know, uh, Robert Jordan is sometimes given a hard time about how he kind of builds or writes certain relationships. So I, I'm kind of curious for these first three books, how have you felt like it's, how, how, how has it been? But before we do that, let me bring in our first caller to the show. It's uh, someone we know well here at the Dusty Wheel. Norm, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Great innkeeper, as always, I, I raise like, my glass to you, sir. Cheers, cheers, Norm. And to, uh, and to our to our to our lovely uh, uh, guests, I raise my mug to you and to everyone in chat. Whoop, whoop! <laughs> so, Norm, uh, just a reminder again to everybody in chat too. Obviously, I know you've been listening for the show. Let's uh, try to avoid any spoilers past the Dragon Reborn. And now, go ahead and ask your question. I've got to know, my lady. Are you as upset as I was with the females not giving Matt his due for Ooh, saving them? Okay. I just got to know because so I went jump on into the end. Talking. Matt totally rescues oh. them. They probably weren't getting out of that themselves. Probably. 
and Matt shows up. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I have here. It's like... Okay. So I have an issue this entire book with these ladies not being able to rescue themselves throughout the entire time. But yeah, they definitely should have been like, hey, we accept we like that you rescued us thank you and not just like wrap them up with the power and hate you know that just seems, <laughs> it seemed rude it was a high stress situation and i think that these particular women are flawed in their egos and i don't think that they're going to accept that they couldn't have done this without him and so i understand where they were coming from and why they didn't give him his due but i also understand why he was pissed off that they didn't yeah does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's funny. I'm seeing some chat say, yeah. uh, you know, MK said, I wanted to slap the crap out of them. And Christine Oakley said, all women everywhere were annoyed with them. <laughs> so yeah, this is a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword too, because that entire situation was a, uh, if he didn't do what he had to do, they would have not been able to get free. And if they didn't do what they did, he would have just gotten like fireballed in the face because there yeah. was an Aes Sedai on guard at that point. And it's like, Hey, if Matt just walks up, I don't know how to veer and you're going to, B. that's true too so it's like a it's a both they both needed to work together and they did but neither of them really acknowledged acknowledge it like he also didn't do what he should have done necessarily so it's like this weird middle ground and yeah in the chat thank you matt was that so hard yes <laughs> have you met these women of course saying thank you is difficult okay so i'm gonna even, like acknowledge that they like each other like I'm going to, I'm going to, again, I'm going to try to add some, some texture to this of, and not because it, they shouldn't have. Right. And again, I have kids and, and I was a kid and even as an adult, there are times where I should thank somebody that I don't or should sure. have. Um, and if someone was writing a book about the moment, I bet there'd be many moments where I look back oh, and I'm yeah. like, everyone well, would have slapped me in that moment. Cause I didn't even say thank you. Like, <laughs> you know, well, I, like. I say that often when I'm like ragging on, you know, Egwene or, you know, someone for being too immature and annoying. And then I, you know, sort of have to take it back and think, well, I wish, you know, I'm glad that no one made a book about me when I was 17 because it's kind of like it's a, not flattering. <laughs> Thankfully, right, right. I didn't. I wasn't a teenager <laughs> yeah. in the age of social media too. Yeah. Like, I, I don't need <laughs> right, right. half the things that I did on anything like. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't. I, so, I, and 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 these people have history with him. And so, what I love about Jordan is he doesn't just give you the thing you want everyone to do in that moment, right? He right. doesn't just say like, "Oh, of course, you know, somebody saves you, you're going to be a, you're the gr kind of grateful person who's going to say something." He doesn't give you every moment like that. So you either have to believe like they're just one thing or the other. And I love that, you know, as you read through it and like you're saying, Danny, you go like, okay, well, yeah, I mean, I guess that does happen. I just wish yeah. that they weren't, they were better than me. Right. In it's that annoying because I want the story to go a certain way yeah. and they're messing it up. But I mean, that's the realistic writing. It's like the, the way I've kind of always described Wheel of Time. It's not a story of what you want to happen is what would probably actually happen. Like you're yeah. going to have people not communicate and you're going to have to have people who are selfish and, you know, mean and, you know, whatever it might be. But it's just that yeah, the amount of, the amount of times that points in the chat right now, actually yeah. there's like the Matt paid a lot of gold for like more speed, more speed to get to them. Like the second he heard that they might be in danger, he was going like, that's a good friend. Number one. I like that. Yeah. And then yeah. if the girls thank them, that would be admitting failure. And I, th nobody in that group is willing to do that even a little bit. So Sure. Yeah, and, and I have I have an I have an additional comment there, but before a Lancer, we're gonna let you go here. But let, tell me, of the first three books, which one is your is your favorite or was your favorite the first time you remember if you were reading through of the Eye of the World, the Great Hunt, or the Dragon Born? Uh, you know what? They always got progressively better as they went along, but I have to say the uh, the Great Hunt only because of. Uh, Rand becoming a uh, blade master and the way that he did it. So that okay. was a cool that, that scene. Was my favorite. That's a good yes. one. That's a good one. Hey, Lancer, as always, man, really appreciate you calling in, leading the charge, uh, getting the conversation going. So, hey, we'll talk to you soon, okay? We'll see you in chat. You guys take care. Thank you. You too. Bye bye.
Yeah, I, I love uh, – great question, great question. And we have two other callers here one. currently in line. I, I want to make this comment, and then we'll take our next caller. We'll get to you here shortly. I know everyone's waiting, like I said. Uh, but, yeah, I appreciate that. The There probably is or was, in Jordan's mind, many instances where Matt was so ungrateful <laughs> – <laughs> that that for Nynaeve and Egwene, like he's just earning back, you know, things that, you know, that, I mean, they didn't expect it of him and just experiences they've already had. So I think it's really easy to to put yourself in a situation where as much as you might think like, yeah, I'm really grateful we're still alive because of that. You're still like, but I'm not going to give that person the satisfaction of it because the seven times I saved their life, they never, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's something <laughs> so human about that. So I, I love that it's there in the books. I'm annoyed by the characters sometimes when they don't do the right thing. If oh, that makes sense. I get so, annoyed. Yeah. I get annoyed with these people. Like they're my family. Right. right. Like I get <laughs> right. angry. That's a lot. <laughs> I get angry with them and I like hold grudges at these characters. Like. I'm too into this, I think. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't think anyone else here in chat feels that way. <laughs> We're all too into this, right? Yeah. yeah that's, right? that's that's So right. you're, you're just one of us, and that's fantastic. That's uh, Let's bring we in our... Her. We got her. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We, we got you. You're in. You're, you're starting to think about these characters and care about what how they treat each other, which I think is honestly uh, something impressive that Jordan, for 14 books, makes you care about how specific characters treat each other. Now there's plenty yeah. of characters later on, you know, where I'm not going to talk about those characters, but I'll be like, <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need this chapter. You know, I could do without this chapter, but uh, there are plenty of moments up to the dragon reborn where I did start to feel like these are my friends and I cared about how they were treated. So let's bring our second caller into the show. I think uh, his name's, uh, is it a nuke, a nuke. Welcome to the dusty wheel. Hi, Hello? this is a look. Anuk, uh, so yeah, hey, welcome. Thank Hi, you very much for calling. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, perfectly. Oh, excellent, excellent. So uh, without spoiling anything past The Dragon Reborn, what's your question for our guests? Well, I have, I have two fairly simple questions. One is, uh, what was their favorite scene from okay. book three? And at the end of the book three, we are led to believe that the Dark One is killed. What do you think the rest of the books are about, if that is true? Gotcha. Excellent. Two great, oh, question. the great oh, questions. Yeah, I love, I love these question. questions. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's start Let's start favorite scene. One. Yeah, favorite scene first, and then let's jump to the... Yeah, I love you that. You want me to go first? Yeah, you go first, because okay. everyone knows yours. So, well, well, one of the things that I do is I pick a favorite scene of each book. So, uh, for the Dragon Reborn, my favorite scene is the Galad and Gawain versus Matt fight. Just because, like, I remember as a younger person just rereading that scene, and it's like that's it's a coming so cool. too. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's like Matt coming into his own and like kind of sticking up for himself. Finally, we saw Matt for so long being cursed and not good, and like, and then finally, finally, he can kick these two like snooty boys' butts <laughs> in the practice yard, and it's just like such a great scene. Well, and we get oh, yeah. that Rand is like an excellent swordsman we get that Perrin is just like badass with his you know axe he swings things around i yeah. guess that's how you fight yeah as and then it's like oh <laughs> what's matt, matt good fight? at yeah i can fight too and Matt's it's like a good. different weapon and it's cool yeah i get it yeah he is good yeah, yeah that's Your scene yeah my oh, favorite yeah. scene is not that scene you hype that chapter up too much <laughs> <laughs> you're like this is so good i can't wait for you to read it and then i got to it and went that was so predictable i knew he was gonna win Okay, the cat a, has a cat toy over there, and I'm just <laughs> distracted. That one's that one's, and I'm not gonna say that's an easy yeah. one to pick, but it is. It's just a fan. That's oh yeah. That I that one gives me the chills every time good. I get there. You know, it's but amazing. But for me, it was so predictable that I just couldn't like it very much. Like it's cool. Matt comes <laughs> sure, to his own. Sure. I appreciate it. Okay, tell it, tell us what your favorite is. Right, you don't need to defend you. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite's also Matt, but it's okay. Matt leaving the white tower in tar Valen with his like luck streak where he <laughs> yeah, yeah. like can't stop winning and then also there's like a gray man after him and he's jumping roofs and then there's also like other people after him and then he meets tom and he's at some like tanning in tanchico bar or something yeah yeah and it's yeah. just like oh it's crazy so, so i just many. it's yeah. like i didn't know which way 
what was and it was just so exciting it was such a page turner it was absolutely my favorite i knew it was going to be my favorite like it's pretty good yeah while i was in it that's my favorite yeah, so I and, and then, this is yeah. There was a second question too, I think. Yeah, there was. Well, uh, about that before we jump to that second question, uh, that see that the whole idea of Matt. What I think is really interesting about that is you both picked this character that really comes in his own this this book, but we no one picked a scene with Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve. <laughs> Anyways, like uh, there are they got like, their and times I, coming. We got more. We got time. We got time. <laughs> we got time. Okay, so to the second question. You yeah. know, um, how do you perceive what happened at the end? Like, where are you at right now at the Dragon Reborn? How do you perceive how that ended? And, yeah. you know, if, as the impression is given that, you know, he's defeated the Dark One, then what are the rest of these books about? Like, how are you, what, where's your head at when it comes to how yeah. the Dragon well, Reborn ended? Well, I have to tell you, at the end of book one, and at the end of book two, and at the end of book three, Matt, th or no, Bran thinks he's killed the Dark One. And every single time, I'm like is this another instance of Rand thinking he's killed the dark one and he hasn't because this is getting old. Like, this is, <laughs> I'm over this trope. I'm over Rand being an idiot and not really understanding what's going on like that. I was, I'm over it. I'm over it. And my, uh, one of my predictions actually going forward is that we're not going to get another nice wrap up ending hmm. again. I think that we're done that. I think that these, uh, at least I hope so because they all ending up, especially after book two, they all, it seems magically. And I mean, I get that it's like <laughs> the Taviran pulling the crap, but they all show up at the same place at the exact same time and they all help each other. And here they all are, whatever, Dark One's dead. Yeah. Okay. Right. No. <laughs> and then we get to the Dragon Reborn and they all are rushing to the same place for different reasons. Again. And I predicted, right. oh, we're all going to end up in tear because, you know, that's apparently what happens here. I hoped it was wrong, but nope, that happened again. It was a little predictable. Fun, but predictable. <laughs> and right. then Ron's like, I killed the Dark One. The only difference, though, is I actually do believe that Beelzemon, the Ishmael character, sure, yeah, is dead. You don't think that I that think person is the literal Dark One, though? Like, no. We've, we've talked about that. It's like, we yeah. Rand has this whole boat he's on where it's like, oh, this dude is the literal, you know, <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it. Like, he's the dark one. Yeah. You didn't really buy that. Mm -mm. So. Mm -mm. But, but I yeah, do think yeah. that this time, because it has been Baalzamon each time. Yeah. And this time there was actually like a body. So... We got like a triple kill I... and then like a body mm -hmm. and like with Kalendor. Yeah. It was a whole deal. Yeah. But so it makes going sense. forward, yeah. I think that the endings are going to be less predictable and less like wrap things up in a neat little okay. package yeah i like it yeah, that's a, i love the well, prediction yeah, I, I was gonna say before we jump i, I just want to kind of mention one thing because one of the most common questions that i've always kind of been asked and it's so hard for me to answer because i don't have a good answer it's for first-time readers that typically like most of us who have read the wheel of time have tried to peer pressure our friends and family into doing it <laughs> that's true <laughs> and it doesn't always work out very well because when you're like oh it's just like it's a gigantic series and it's like there's 15 books to read through and then you're going to want to reread it a bunch of times and then like commit to all these I you know cons i don't understand why having a lot of books to read in your i don't i don't it's like a bad thing but i like the fact that the way the wheel of time is written is that if someone like someone starting the series doesn't have to commit to 15 books they can read the trilogy the first three books and have a nice like ending to the trilogy i disagree i, I, I love this i love this idea about. i love this idea by the way that you're like Let's all take a break and sell the Wheel of Time as a three book series. I love that. That's yeah. great. And then like once they're committed and they're like, wait, I need more. Then you hit them with the rest. We well, can this always a, be like, yeah. read the first book. And if you don't want to read it on, then don't. Just like don't keep reading. But it's like, I, I feel like there is a nice little wrap up where you could pretend that everything's finalized and then, you know. Yeah. That's the so end. to our to our caller and thank you very much. Fantastic yeah, thank questions. Thank you so much. Excellent. Let, questions. Before before I let you go, before we get to our last caller, let's let's let, at least that's on right now. Uh, I want to ask you that first question. What's your favorite scene from The Dragon Reborn? Oh, uh, I would have to say it it would be the same as uh, like Matt's fight. But if you had me to pick something else, I would say uh, Matt visiting. Andor. Oh, oh gotcha. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. 
via Rand, like falling in, great, going yeah. into the palace. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I also That's... love that you said that in my scene too. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. I, yeah, there's I love so that. Too. Many good scenes, I, there's actually. so many good scenes. That's the hard part, too. Yeah, so. but, and that's, that's that's very true. Even though it starts off slow, there are some fantastic scenes in there. Hey, thank you so much for calling. Hopefully, you. you'll give us another call again, and uh, hopefully, we'll check you out and chat. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. So we have uh, one other caller on with us. We probably have time for one more caller after this. So if there's one more person out there, if lots of you call. We might not get to your calls, so don't be too offended. But let's bring our last caller as of now into the I show. I can't help it that I'm so popular. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jeremy, to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hey, guys. It, it's really nice to hear this conversation about uh, the Wheel of Time and uh, people's first reactions. Uh, it, it, wonderful. It's, it's, you know, really nice. Yeah, it's it's it, and it's... It is something that I I love now doing, and we should uh, we should do more of these new reader things that, here at the Dusty Wheel. I'll try this year. I know people have asked it for, but I love this hearing these things because we get to kind of almost relive some of this moments and and remind ourselves why we did love these uh, books. So, uh, Jeremy, what's on your mind? You know, without spoiling anything past the Dragon Reborn, what question do you have for our guests? Well, I I was wondering what they thought about. Uh, uh, Elaine in, you know, being the, the princess of Andor and the fact that she didn't really have any friends, like you, you really never hear like the, the two rivers girls come in and she becomes friends with them, but she never like, you know, you have uh two country women coming in who have no idea or, or, or no knowledge, but uh, Elaine doesn't, you know, she kind of pivots around their storyline. Like, uh, I found that jarring to know that, like, uh, the daughter of a queen really didn't have many contacts going in, but uh, just wanted to see what uh, other people thought on their first read. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, go for it. That is a good question, because it's something I hadn't really thought of very much, but the fact that Elaine didn't really have, and Galad as well, right? Galad's the Gawain. cool one. Oh, Gawain. Gawain. <laughs> okay, that's a cool one. Right Galad's on. the hoity-toity. Right, okay, Gawain. Yeah. Gawain's a good one? Okay, so neither of them really had any interactions, like, unsupervised or, like, un prearranged, I yeah. think. So I think the fact that, like, Rand fell into their garden and they were both like cool you're cool i like you and they're both like elaine right away is like i like you a lot my mother says i should marry someone from the two rivers and like right away you're like <laughs> what's happening here and then you have um sorry my cat is i'm just gonna throw her away okay so <laughs> i'm trying to climb up on my lap and then you have gawain right gawain who's like Rand, you're so cool. Do you want to be my best friend? Like the second he meets him. So <laughs> it is a little jarring. Well, he said he has a good point too, because Elaine grew up secluded. So, and the girls also grew up secluded, but just like in a different way. It's like one in the country, nobody visits my town. And there's 72 people in my, in my town that I grew up in. It's like, yeah, I get that. That's secluded. And then Elaine, she's as secluded, if not more so, because it's like, you have all these rules, regulations, places to be things to learn and you don't get the social upbringing that the girls may have too so it's like well and it's like the second that elaine and Egwene meet they're like insta bffs like yeah and i mean it happens sometimes right yeah you yeah have it's a like connection with some people we don't we, and it's almost like jordan decided to not dig into their life very much right we we kind of got to, we skipped that you know, and yeah. it does make me wonder, like Jeremy just brought this up. I, I've never thought about this, honestly. You know, <laughs> this is that whole gap of information that I just that almost you makes characters. It yeah. makes them two dimensional, right? Like uh, who were Elaine's friends, you know, or, you know, who were the people that she did she depend on anyone? And when she went to Tarvalon, you know, was she, you know, missing somebody? And then she kind of found other friends because she needed that interaction, you know, like uh, those are the kind of things that I don't think Robert Jordan was ever asked, you know, no, uh, but I mean, yeah. consider this, consider this so that with Elaine, 
even from her own perspective of her talking about her childhood, it was Gawain as her brother and like BFF and Galad as the one she literally hates. Like she hates him so much. She's she not my brother. That yeah. He's her brother. Yeah. And then she talks about <laughs> Linny, like her, the, the, the nurse, yeah. the nurse. Oh, maid, yeah, that's you want to call it. It. But from her perspective of her childhood, those are the only people and if you grew up with a bunch of friends, she might think about, she might have like, like recollections of, oh, you know, at court, the daughters of other noble houses, something, something. Yeah. But we don't get that. So it is kind of seeming like she was secluded and she didn't have friends. Yeah, yeah so that's like, a really. I'm on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so, fair, I, I, I'm there. The was like, I've made Insta BFS before and like, so have I. Yeah, but, sure. Like, it's just interesting. Yeah, no, it, it does add dimension to Elaine that I probably have never put up there as a reader over so many years. Yeah. And that's why I do love talking about this. Uh, Jeremy, fantastic question. Uh, really appreciate that. The previous caller, Jeremy, asked about favorite scene. Before we let you go, did you have a favorite scene that wasn't one of the ones already picked from the Dragon Reborn? Um, I, I will say, uh, I, I'll go back to the first caller when you asked him what was your favorite book. Yeah, yeah. And to me, my favorite book was The Dragon Reborn because that was when you knew it wasn't just a story about Rand. Mm. It was, you know, there were going to be all of these characters involved. You know, it was just... I, I, the Dragon Reborn was great to me because it just expanded the whole thing and yeah. and then you knew you were in for, like, a really big ride. So, yeah, yeah I really I really loved that book. Uh and to to those who have not read the Shadow Rising, oh, you're you're it's, you're in for a treat. Yeah. So <laughs> right, I agree. <laughs> I agree, Jeremy. Thank you so much for calling. Thanks for holding online for us. And hopefully, we'll talk to you again Thanks, here kiddo. at the Dusty Wheel. Have a good one. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, the, uh, fantastic uh, questions from all the callers so far. We do have two more. We'll try to weave them into our conversation. I want to jump here to some questions that I've been kind of curious about, and I want to jump back to the dream Teron Grail. So okay. let's 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 jump there. What are your thoughts? I bet we're just going to drop that. That's a topic. Dream Teron Grail. Tell us where you're at, Danny. Okay. <laughs> okay so the biggest thing that i relate this dream terrain reel to is the uh one ring to okay the my precious interesting because, okay yeah because Egwene definitely becomes a little possessive interesting over okay. this ring and you know at some point she's letting it like touch her skin and then she also gets like super moody and i don't know if that's just robert jordan writing a teenage girl or if that if there's more well she also has the whole like she doesn't want to lend it out and she only lets uh elaine and nynaeve use it like one time each like maybe yeah she just doesn't want she's she, very possessive but she it. acknowledges that she doesn't want anyone to touch it like when we're in her head she's like it's mine it's my precious like you can't have it <laughs> and so and like <laughs> and even nynaeve at some point is like maybe you're spending too much time with that thing and she's like <laughs> no you know so I don't know. So I yeah, I, I, wow. I, yeah, yeah, that is interesting. I I've never I, I hadn't ever again like adding to the dimensions. I never thought those exact words. Do you think that there is some addictive kind of property to this Tehran Grail? Then is that where your head's at at this moment? Oh yeah. Okay. I think I like I found it obvious. Like she won't let anybody else. She's like, no, dreaming's my thing. And, you know, you guys can't even try because it's mine. Like, ah, it's too dangerous for you. But yeah. I, I don't, all my <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's specifically the like dream, the dream Terangriel, or if it's just the dreaming thing that Egwene is so clearly proud of. You know, there hasn't been a dreamer in 500 years. And we get that how many times because she's so proud that. I'm better she has her than head everyone. inflated multiple times on multiple topics. So yeah, I'm the best dreamer. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't know. No one else can go where I go. I'm, I'm so. Cool. I'm I'm all for telling children that they're special and you know, but at some point we got a level with you. <laughs> You're not more special than anyone else. I, I like it. By the way, I saw Matt Scoundrel put egg, egg golem. Uh, instead of yeah. Eggwin <laughs> in Ooh, chat. That's really yes, Egg, egg Gollum. Gollum. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. might be that that's might be a like... favorite hashtag coming out of the show is Egg Gollum. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I say 
one yeah, of the ahead. biggest things, sorry, that I didn't care for about the dream Terangrial is how she brought it to the testing okay. and like messed with that Terangrial and then didn't come clean about it. Like, mm. I don't know who she'd come clean to, like, who can you actually trust? But it annoyed me that she was like, yeah, weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's so weird that that did that. I have no idea why. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. It just annoyed me. Okay, yeah, she so she keeps it under wraps. She doesn't share knowledge like that. So, true. okay. So now I'm curious uh, from her use of it. Any um, anything come out of that? Like any thoughts of of her use? Like where do you think this story is going after the Dragon Reborn? Like do you have predictions of of anything that you up to the Dragon Reborn that you had read where you're like, huh? I wonder how this is going to come into play. A hundred percent. I've already sort of speculated about the Perrin Egwene dream connection. Interesting. Because okay. Perrin's yeah. having yeah. his like wolf dreams and they're like accidentally seeing each other sometimes. It seems really the same. It's literally it's the same. <laughs> and okay. so like maybe they're gonna somehow have a crossover event. It's gonna be good. Have a crossover yeah. event. Yeah. I don't know. That's okay. like my biggest thing. And then like obviously all of her there's so many. Like every time we get an Egwene perspective, we get the new dreams that she's been having. And there are so many and they're all clearly predictions. The biggest thing I take out of it is that the dumb white cloaks are in the two rivers. And that's annoying. But um I don't know. There's lots. There's lots of things yeah. going on. Yeah. That it's yeah. like hard to understand I think one of the one of the remember. cool things about RJ's writing is that he links up so many things that are similar but not the same. So you have like you have the the wolf dream and you've got the you know Teleran Riyadh ring and you've got the ways as a way of traveling and you've got the portal stones and it's like everything kind of seems a little bit interconnected but not quite close enough to the same and you know that he's got some sort of like mad scientist lab <laughs> can from all these things right and they all make sense somehow but you just gotta piece it together yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the way, let's take a quick reminder here for everyone. If it, you're just joining us or you've been here and you're in chat and you need another reminder, this is a non-spoiler show. We don't want to allude to spoilers either in live chat past the Dragon Reborn. We want people to be here in chat with us. They don't have to feel like there's something that's going to be spoiled. So just keep that in mind. And if you're here and you're enjoying this kind of live Wheel of Time stuff that we do here at the Dusty Wheel. Please like this video. Other fans can find us while we're live much easier. And it helps afterwards for fans to find us on YouTube. And if you're not a subscriber, why not? Just join us here at the Dusty Wheel. It's Just a lot of fun. Do it. Right? Just we do it. We want to hit 50,000 because we need to see Matt here. <laughs> we need to see <laughs> Matt here. It. We need oh, gosh. Man. The funniest thing is for that point, and we'll take a little detour here for 30 seconds. That's so far out that I don't even have to conceptualize it right now. I don't but know, if I there is every sometime, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, years, years from now, when it gets closer, this is going to be a different years reaction. From now. Okay, okay, <laughs> this is gonna, okay. this is gonna be a different reaction. At looking at the camera every time someone brings it up. I can tell you that my face will not be laughing. <laughs> Matt's bad predictions, eh? Matt's yeah. bad predictions. <laughs> yeah, but please do. Uh, yeah, and if, uh, make sure to hit the notifications so you know when we're live. We try to do shows on Wednesdays and Sundays. And like I said, if you missed it, we're going to be doing watch parties over on Twitch. You can find the links in the description, both to that and to the Wheel Weaves podcast. Make sure you go follow these wonderful people. This is, this is what they get to do all the time, and this is a lot of fun. And, and I just found out that I won't, I won't out this person completely, but I just found out a friend of mine happens to be following your podcast and that's awesome. And uh, so yeah. uh, I don't cool. want to tell anybody who that friend is until I hear from that friend that it's okay to tell everybody. <laughs> but it. it's somebody I know that's a friend that would, that's following you. So it's fantastic. That's following uh, and listening along and we don't even know if they're reading the book. So yeah, I'm interested yeah. to know if they're actually getting anything about the story. Or... <laughs> I do. I, I want to know that too. That's I, I'm going to be talking to this friend because they said they were, I think they were on the 24th episode. So there's a, yeah, I, I, now I need to ask this friend how they're doing. So, uh, and I so, need a follow up. For sure. So let's, uh, let's bring in our next caller to the show. Um, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's Andre. Welcome to the dusty wheel. How are you doing tonight? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are y'all guys doing? 
Fantastic. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, just as a reminder, of course, uh, make sure not to spoil anything after the dragon are born, but what's your question for our guests tonight? Hey, well, I'm actually a patron with uh, the Will Weeks podcast. Oh, okay. So okay. Sweet. I had a question and I wanted to give my favorite scene first. Okay. And, oh, um, cool. Okay. My, my favorite scene is from uh, the great hunt, specifically when Rand came from out of the, uh, the portal world, because he didn't really know what was going on, but he was, you know, stepping into his cool. He was becoming a leader. And when he got to the city, he didn't really know what was going on. But, you know, he was just trying to find – he was just finding the way, if you get what I'm saying. And then by the time um, – what's the name? Ingtar and um, the great Ajaj, by the time they showed up, he was just already in his cool. And they, they, couldn't, they couldn't do nothing but accept that he was the leader by that point. So I really he enjoyed that. into it, that yeah. Sort of <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, my question is probably specifically for Danny, but other first time readers the, the 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 book series is so wide and expansive and there's so many characters. How do you not like research ahead? Because I had a problem with that when I first read it, like I'd see a name and I'd go Google it. And then you see 13 other links to other people. And it's, it's, a, it's a whole rabbit hole if you can lose yourself. So I just wanted to know how you uh, navigate that. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a great question. How do you want to go answer for that one? Yeah, that's yeah. a funny one. You go. You go first. How do I stop you from researching? Yeah, things? how do you stop me? <laughs> like, that's a, no, no, no. It's funny. I have, a, I have an internet blocker. No, no, no. And I don't let her have Wi Fi. I just thought it was Good. so funny because <laughs> I thought you were going to say how you are constantly being like, what are you looking at? What are you doing? Yeah. Don't look at this. Yeah. Like even yeah. when you're doing your notes on your laptop, and like, I don't like, look at my notes. Come don't turn. I turn my computer to away. Ask you a question. He's like, I'm doing my notes. Don't. Are and you I, cheating on the wheel of time? <laughs> no, like, I'm, be just, sure. I'm just not. Like being authentic and genuine on the podcast means more to me than anything else. And it's interesting <sighs> that that has come as far as it has because i think at the beginning in the eye of the world we just started the podcast and i had no idea where it would go or why we were even doing it like it was just sort of like a fun hobby oh let's talk let's do like a little book club with the two of us with a microphone and maybe someone will listen to it one day kind of thing and at that point when you're reading the eye of the world i didn't feel the need to research because it wasn't you don't know anything. It didn't hook like... me. Like, it wasn't like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I need to know, right? So yeah. it was more like, what the hell is going on? That was, <laughs> that was more yeah. than anything. And then now that we are further in and we are doing this thing together. It, it, it's intentional. So that's the it thing. It really like makes we, me. We try hard yeah. not to do anything. So, like, we, she definitely, like, does her very best not to, like, she never looks up anything. She barely even glances at the glossary yeah. unless she, like, checks with me first. Yeah. We don't discuss the chapter before we record the chapter yeah, we to just make sure that we don't, to be like, as authentic as possible. Stuff. Yeah. So, it's like, it, it's intentionally not. Like, doing it wouldn't it, be so. fun if I, like, looked up some spoilers and then had to, like, pretend that I didn't know them yeah. like that's yeah. not fun that's, i don't know <laughs> yeah that'd be weird yeah that's that, that's a good point and i just saw you know a user in chat alana say that it sounds like typed in a, a name just into the google search and i and i just said the google that was weird uh typed the name into google that was that that's was okay. strange. That's okay. google. that was weird uh so typed it into google and had something drop down that spoiled something just that simply, right? Like that's, it's one second. And like you said, <laughs> then it does, it, it ruins your ability to kind of be it's genuine in that moment. It's getting more difficult yeah. that I'm in charge of our social media because yeah. the further along I get, the more I understand in like Twitter of time, uh, especially Ooh. on Twitter where people the are- issue, The issue is there's yeah. so many like false flags, like the amount yeah. of people <laughs> who like pick their own name, make up their own fantasy names, pick their own Aja. You could have like Randall Thor of the green Aja as a Twitter or a time user yeah. and be like, is that something from the book? I don't even know. And I'm know. like, oh my God, Brown so, becomes a green agent? Like, I don't know. So it's like, there's so many like, <laughs> and if you've read the series, you'd be like, oh my God, how did you not pick that up as a spoiler? But it's like, but in what universe is yeah, that really, right? I would right? say that when I was, when even still, if I do see something, for the most part, it's characters I don't know and it's situations I don't understand. And 
it doesn't even stay in my head and I don't even acknowledge it for the yeah. most part. I know it's going to get harder as we go along and we'll adjust to that because I don't want to be spoiled. And I think that that's the biggest thing is if people are like secretly wanting to be spoiled, then they're secretly going to be spoiled. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah. I don't want to be so. That's yeah, it. that's yeah, that. Oh man, I can't even imagine. So that's one thing I'm glad. I hate spoilers, and now I'm worried about every tweet. You guys follow our accounts. I don't. I spoil everything I'm in my so tweets, annoyed. so I have we to don't be look so at your stuff. careful. Oh, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> you should hopefully have mine hidden. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, hey, Andre, thank you so much for calling in, man. Yeah. Appreciate you uh, holding on line for us, and Thanks, have Andre. a yeah, have a good evening. Okay. Ty Sharp, my one. You too. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, great oh, man, great callers tonight. Thank you everyone so much. Uh, let's jump back to we just covered the Dream Tarong Grail a bit. Uh, I it, it's a part of the Dragon Reborn I love a lot, but I'm gonna stop there because again, I don't want it, my conversations to go <laughs> anywhere beyond the Dragon Reborn. Uh, but you know, as these books go on, I'd love to have you both back to give some reactions as you, you know, yeah. we'll do some new. Yeah, I have to say, there was some speculation about your friend in the chat, and I have mm. to confirm that it is Rafe Judkins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, to us. he, yeah. he yeah. knows us and he's your best friend, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, I want to ask uh, about... Uh, relationships and let's get back to that question not that it was getting a little bit divisive in chat and that's not what i want to intend here but are there are there relationships that you think so far up to the dragon reborn mm -hmm. or through the end of the dragon Reborn, that you think robert jordan's doing a great job kind of you know building them yeah. in a way that you're you're catching and you and you right. believe in it okay. or or are there relationships where you're like I don't know if this is a thing, but I don't believe in it. Basically, I'm trying to look for your predictions about relationships at this point and how your what your reaction's been. Fair. Okay, so I think the uh, most obvious one is Lan and Nynaeve. Like, that's the most probably established relationship that we've seen that's also sort of a non-relationship, but it's two people who are conflicted, who care for each other. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. And so I do appreciate the Nynaeve Lan relationship and I think that it's going to continue and go farther and they are eventually going to connect and give up the <laughs> but I don't want you to be a widow you know whatever thing and okay I don't know I think that it's yeah. good I think that their energy levels match I think that she's really up here and he's sort of like cool and calm and she's like bah! and I don't know yeah, I, I mean, don't have yeah. words anymore. I'm just yelling things. In the books, <laughs> like we still are pretty, pretty, you know, not very far along in their relationship development. One of the things that I do, I, I appreciate, is the Egwene and Rand, honestly, where it's these two people come from a small town. They're like the high school sweetheart type. We were promised to each other, and then and we then went off to college. Both <laughs> like not into it anymore, and yeah. don't know how to tell the other person that. <laughs> and then also like it's still like this whole fight where it's like, yeah, I went off to college and realized there's other girls that I, you know, don't want to get in this arranged marriage situation from <laughs> being like <laughs> in in junior high or whatever. But it's like it is pretty pretty realistic considering where RJ came from and like grew up that he does have a lot of those like small town conservative vibes that he shows in his writing. Like I'm sure lots of people can understand where Rand and Egwene come from in this. Yeah. yeah, But it's is, over. Is there a relationship in your head that you predict is going to happen, but there's no, and basically from whatever you've read up right. through the end of the Dragon Reborn, is there something right. that you think is going to show up? Okay, yeah. so I have a couple. So like okay. number one, especially we end the Dragon Reborn with Fayil and Perrin being like very connected. Okay. You know, yeah. he like risks his life in the dream world to save her, comes out and a Dragon Reborn and they're all like, oh, my blacksmith, you know, like. She went from having too big of a nose to being perfect and super beautiful. Super beautiful. Yeah. So, okay, okay. Um, so they're definitely in it and okay. yeah, that's, I don't know. All that's I'll the, say there, like he, she yeah. was just like clearly from, I think the second I met her, like yeah. I did not get, well, she's the Falcon. She's the Falcon right? Okay. of the Hawk, Hawk and Falcon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the other things I predicted in terms of like going forward, we have Elaine and probably Rand. 
going forward. And then we have Min sure. and Rand, but then we also have Min's viewing of there like being three women for Rand, which I'm still a little unclear on. I'm not sure okay. if that's like all at the same time, like a sister wives, IEL business, or if that's like, um, like, like a one different, at a time, like a one at a time. Like we got like eleven more books. I don't know how long that spans. Like maybe he'll okay. have different relationships. Like yeah, yeah. I'm not a hundred percent on what's going on there. So yeah, I, I like that. I like that you brought that one up. Yeah, that's an interesting yeah. one. Where at this point, you know, like what does that mean? So and, yeah. and how is that? How will it or won't it play out? Because again, we just talked about Jordan writing things. And it's always a question of, will he keep something going or not? And it's going, like clear, you know? but yet not. And she doesn't think the third wheel is naive. She's like pretty sure it's not that. So I just got to okay. say it on record. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. That's on record. You're you're on record for saying it's and not. And it's yeah, not yeah, a yeah, Gwen. So. That's the and biggest thing. <laughs> and it's not okay. a That's the like real one. Yeah. The third is into Gwen. <laughs> yeah. Because okay. they're, I think that they're just like gonna, they're not into it. It's Moraine. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of Moraine, you know who's always super into Moraine when we hear from his perspective? Yes. Okay. Tom. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They got a little okay. flirt flirtation going on. Yeah, she like is dazzled by his knives. And <laughs> uh and he just like always seems to be, even though he hates Aes Sedai and he used to be super into, you know, he ghosted the queen, so that was like it's a he ghosted, the, thing. he ghosted the queen i like it yeah, yeah. he like disappeared okay. on her that was a whole thing and i don't know it just seems he thinks of her as a beautiful woman every time he thinks time. of her yeah he always is intrigued okay. by her. and they may you've speculated they may slash maybe not have some sort of history yeah of knowing of each other at least that yeah not necessarily knowing each other but knowing of yeah that other. one i that's so. a speculation of mine that's a prediction yeah. i've made out loud on recording yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So uh, I appreciate you kind of giving us that, that thought of, you know, from a relationship standpoint, these are always fun to go back and we'll have to, as the series go on, come back to some of yeah. these. We have to like, I'll have to get yeah. like clips well, and I can't wait. I need to get clips and I need to like post a clip, you know? Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm saying is like during our next one that you're, that you're back for, I can post a clip and say, you know, if anything that I found did come out or didn't, you know, we can, and then by the time you get to the end of these, I'll have lots of those clips and then we can have fun just playing those. Uh, so, That'd be great. Let's so I do like a, <laughs> no, go ahead. a montage of her being wrong about things. <laughs> is that what you, yeah, yeah, that's what, now we're getting close to the end of the <laughs> show. Be so many. We, we do have one, uh, one last caller. I'll let that caller. It's, uh, join us for the very end. It'll be our last question from him. But I want to cover one question before that. And I want to turn the gears a little bit of what we've talked about to Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. And I want to okay. ask you both, yeah. you've, you've read these first three books. What does Rafe and their team need to get right about the, you know, when it comes to the Dragon Reborn? You know, if you were, if you're going to adapt a Dragon Reborn into the TV series, what do you feel like has to be there and what could you drop? And I want both of you to say, I'm willing to drop, I think they could drop this, but this has to be there. And yeah, do that. And then we'll, like I said, we'll bring in our last caller here and we'll end the show. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go first? Nope. Okay. So this is hard because like my opinion should never be taken as like a, this is how you should make a TV show. Just like number one on record. I have no idea how people make TV shows. I think that they could drop uh, the entire Ili like going to Ilian storyline. Oh, like the okay. whole in the easy and the badger with the Yeah, Shadow it's just like a brothers. whole, cause then they just go to tier afterwards. It's like, they could put it in a different place. Like you can, you can condense a lot of this stuff Mm -hmm. um i do like the whole rand takes off across the country and we don't see him sure. that's i think is important because he can come to terms with himself in a lot of ways but we could really clip that out um the girls getting kidnapped you could cut that out really right i hated how they like couldn't save themselves from that like that annoyed yeah. me i thought they were about to save themselves and then they like i yell showed up yeah and spin that was it a little bit different like get them yeah. meeting in a different location but it just it, in the dragon reborn you see the girls get captured and like taken prisoner and can't really free themselves without assistance like it's at even in the in the bandit camp whatever you want to call it like they could have possibly gotten up themselves like maybe we don't know but it's like you could condense a lot of those storylines Okay. Yeah. I like this. That's, those are, those are good ones. Interesting. You know, again, for those who are watching, this is a new reader uh, episode. So if you're answering this question in your head, 
you know, it's only with the knowledge of up through the dragon are born. What do you feel like could must stay and, and could be cut? So Danny, what's your thoughts here? Yeah. Right. So I would say a must stay is probably Matt going to Camelin for 20 minutes. Like it's a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a, it's like a short, <laughs> An okay. afternoon to Camelin and then we're out of here. Back on the boat. Kind of thing. You could spin it so like it's an indifferent, yeah. Maybe, but I think his meeting with Morgays is actually quite important. And I have a prediction about that Gabriel guy being some forsaken. Okay. So like, I feel dude. like that's probably yeah. important to the story. It's interesting to think about what they should keep and what they shouldn't from book three, which is, you know, potentially season you know, two or three. So I sure. really think it depends like what they keep from the other books. Yeah. That will really. Yeah. No, that, and yeah, that will. If they cut yeah. Camelin out altogether and Rand falling in, well then the whole Matt falling in thing, which I think is hilarious and should <laughs> stay. Well, then it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. Right? I sure. mean, even the end of book three, like very, very truthfully, because you kind of get like a double battle at the end of the dragon are born. Mm. It's like a double forsaken teller and Riyadh weird dream world battle with Maureen for just a little smidgen, right? Yeah. Like they could revamp that entire thing into a different format. Yeah. And I've always been on it. Like I've always said, I would prefer to have two TV shows. One is like a scene for scene remake of the book. Like books. literally the book yeah. is just the script. <laughs> and then yeah. do your own thing. Like I want both, but I get yeah. that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So, that's that's fair. I do have From to agree with someone in the chat that said they have to keep the IEL meeting. And I yeah. 100% agree, 100%. Yeah. No matter how it happens, like the, I really, really love the parent scene. Like this is the only parent scene I think I've said is one of my favorites in a book and it's him freeing Gull and then like just obliterating white cloaks. Like that's, oh, that's a like the scene. whole scene yeah. is just <laughs> phenomenal. Like it's great. Yeah. So like that type of stuff really needs to stay there. Stuff that shows that Perrin is super badass or like can be badass like that needs to be there otherwise yeah. he's just like a <laughs> yeah. boring guy <laughs> yeah no i agree with I, I i that scene in particular that you just talked about and uh you know as, as village mattress just pointed out in chat the luck bender as we call it you know when matt uh, oh yes. yeah so it's that like has to be it's so great yeah specific things that just like define the character yeah that right. those can't be missed yeah, absolutely. Uh, fantastic answers. Uh, you know, t thanks to everybody who has been here. We're going to bring our last caller in and then we'll tie up some things. Uh, the Wheel Weaves podcast is running a giveaway. So I'm going to have them tell us about their giveaway here at the end. We'll give them some final notes, uh, answer some questions here, and then we will end for the evening here at the Wheel. So let's bring our last caller into the show. Hey, Kyle, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hey, doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Really, uh, really happy you guys waited for me. So appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I appreciate you waiting around. Sorry to make you wait so long there. Okay, so keeping in line with the spirit, I think we've done a pretty good job here. No spoilers past the Dragon Reborn. With that in mind, what's your question for Danny and Brett? Sure, sure. Um, I feel like the Dragon Reborn is the first book in the series that has like a humorous element to it. Okay. And I'm just wondering if. Um, if you picked up on that as a first time reader, like was that something that you're like, Oh, this book actually is kind of funny where the others are a little bit more serious in action. Um, so yeah. yeah, I do have an excellent answer for that. And I, what hooked me the very first time I thought to myself, okay, I'm into it. I'm doing this. And it was in eye of the world and I'm somebody who really likes humor and, really gets into that kind of thing and it was in eye of the world when rand was having his like channeling after effect episodes yeah yeah i thought they were so funny like rand like when he was like swinging from the mast of the spray <laughs> oh, yeah. you know like i found those so entertaining and just like really funny or when he just like decides to stare down and confront Dane Bornhall, the white cloak in the middle of Berlin. Like I found those instances really funny. And I actually do find quite a bit of humor, maybe where other people don't, but I, I do actually find quite a bit of humor through okay. all of those books. Yeah, like right from the get-go. You're right from the get-go. I mean, I feel like uh, the I Dragon, funny. Dragon Reborn has like a particular instance just in the sense that that is Matt coming back to life in a lot yeah, of senses. Yeah, that's fair. And sure. Matt's like her token, like funny guy 
who brings a lot of that humor to the book. So I think in The Dragon Reborn, we got more math than we had previously and certainly in a better attitude. So I can definitely yeah. see why like Dragon Reborn stood out on the comedic side. I want yeah. to say there, yeah. yeah, there was in in the White Tower, there was there was a, a variety of those kind of moments. And, there's a whole bunch, and it's yeah, all yeah. mad. Like it's so much mad. It's great. There's a. I, I want to say there's some Varen funny moments too. Um, but I, yeah, you know, it's 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 actually <laughs> thinking about it that way. I think that's part of the process when you're reading is really buying into the fact that Jordan is having a good time here, <laughs> and 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 yeah. very much so. Well, even especially the back and forth between. Like when they're in the ways for the first time, this is all back to Out of the World, but when they're in the ways for the first time and then Perrin's like, yeah, that Min was pretty. Hey, Rand. And then Egwene's like, who's Min? Like, it, I don't know. Like I yeah. found those scenes so funny. <laughs> and then Perrin's yeah, Perrin's yeah. like, Who, what about Aram? Yeah. <laughs> and then Rand does the same. Yeah. There's a bunch of yeah. really yeah, absolutely. funny yeah. back and forth stuff. Yeah, there's, a, I yeah. don't know. I just, I guess I just find the humor in what I do, but it's so, part of why it has, it's kept me reading, so. So Kyle, is there one that stands out to you the most in the Dragon Reborn? Before we let you go, is there, is there oh. one that you just think about and you just it makes you laugh every time? There's a couple. There, the, you guys mentioned this. It's great the callback of Matt falling into the garden to be like, and and the one head guard at, and uh, and Camelin is like, we got to get that wall fixed. Talonvor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's our boy. I've said that Brett could play Talonvor. Everyone's like, who could you play? And I'm like, Brett could be just Talonvor. Like that would be the better. <laughs> I disagree strongly because I'm guard number two that dies immediately. So yeah. <laughs> my um my all time favorite my all time favorite like funny moment probably in the whole series is Matt on the roof, kind of overlooking Tyr, uh, ready to attack the stone, and then Julian kind of gets some Julian, and, and they get in a scruff, and he's like, "What are you doing on the roof?" And then. All of a sudden, a bunch of Aiel appear on the roof. Up, and, and then he just, like, like, blows up the side of the mountain. Or he's, he's just, like, he says, there's some line about, like, all I need is someone to, like, come wandering around looking for an inn. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. like, yeah. everyone's on the roof today. <laughs> okay, so I have to I have to show the one that's sticking out to me. Uh, it made me laugh so hard was when Lan uh, finds Perrin after he and Gaul have just, like, killed everybody. <laughs> and he, like, oh, yeah. he comes over and he's like... Oh, I guess my plans have changed now. Thanks yeah. a lot, basically. This, and he's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then he runs. He's like, well, run, you know, like, and it's just a really, f I mean, the the moment itself of what's just happened is not funny, but just Lan's reaction of showing up for someone that's like, you know, you think it was like stone faced, you know, but it, yeah. I think I would have like that. That part always makes me laugh. Uh, that's a, that's a great. There's... Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Cal. <laughs> well, there's another great moment, like right, right in there too. when when Perrin, goes to Moraine and like, uh, there's this girl staring at me. I think she's a dark friend and Moraine's like, I mean, maybe she just thinks you're cute. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a good one. It's like, yeah, that whole, that whole section in that, yeah, in that town, that whole section, there's actually like, oh, the one that made me laugh, we did a live adaptation of this. Loyal is like set up. He's like, yeah, they got this oh, yeah, bed for me. And he's like, I this is amazing. Yeah. And he goes to like, he's like, he's just starting to write and, and, he get, and they come in and they're like, we gotta leave. And he's like, <laughs> Oh. What? But what's so great is like everyone else would be like ticked off, you know, from somebody in Loyal's uh, spot. But then he's like five seconds later, he's on this horse and he's like, isn't this exciting? And it, that whole section just makes me laugh so hard. And he like didn't get to sleep in his old gear bed. He's so yeah, beard hearted. Yeah. He's just the yeah, best. He's, he's, yeah, he's the best. Hey, Kyle, thanks for this is a great note to end this on. Thank you for hanging around here and, uh, and, and bringing us this question. Hopefully you'll give us a call back here at the Dusty Wheel another day. Okay. Have a good one. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Another, man. Oh, man. Just like I have to say it because like, we didn't talk about the great hunt at all, but I have to yeah. say Rand not playing the game of houses, but then yeah. playing the game of houses excellently because he's like, <laughs> I'm not playing. And he's like, throws the <laughs> letters into the fireplace. Like, all of that is so funny. That's like a power yeah. move right there. It's so, so funny. He's like, I don't want to play. And they're like, wow, you're good at this. <laughs> okay. So, this is uh, this is everyone we have to do. I think this, this is telling us we have to do a humor episode here, live stream on just the funniest moments in the wheel of time. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so let's yeah. no one let me forget that in in live chat afterwards I'll write that down. We have to do a humor live stream, if not a couple of them. That would be fantastic. So Yeah, that was okay. an excellent question. Yeah, excellent yeah. question. Let's let's tie this up for the evening. Tell everybody about this giveaway you have going on, how they can get involved in that. 
Sure. So our giveaway is on Instagram and we have collaborated with Andy Laugh and she is a Canadian artist. She has done this watercolor rendition of the Ranland map that we actually own. We got my dad actually, and my family, not just my dad, my family gave this to us for like Hanukkah slash Christmas. And we reached out to the designer, the, the artist and said, you know, is it okay if we mention you? Cause people are going to ask where we got this map. And she's like, no problem. And we became like friends and she was like, do you guys want to give away a map? And we're like, yes, please. <laughs> so she has graciously offered to give away a map and that's happening yeah. right now this week it happened quite coincidentally with the Corey lansdale print giveaway so it's like print giveaway week but uh, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah we're, yeah we're super excited it's over at our instagram the wheel weaves podcast and you just need to follow us and andy and tag a friend and comment yeah, and then you, you get one of those lovely things. It's really cool. Like I don't know how well anyone can see it. Obviously, and if you but... and if you don't win, you should also just go buy one. Yeah, from they're Andy so Laugh cool. They're so it's good. So pretty. Yeah. It's so nice. By the yeah. way, somebody tag me on this post, or I'll try to tag oh, other good. people. Right. I know, but there <laughs> and you, you can find the you can find the link in chat. We'll put the link in the description of the video after this. So you can find it there Thank you for that. and, and yeah, absolutely. And we'll, and we'll also put the one in for Corey. You only have until Monday end of day for the Corey's and I, how they have until February 26th for yours. Is that right? They Friday, have, uh, yes. yeah. yeah. Okay. So by Friday, you need to put your, your name in basically into the hat here to win that. Please yeah. do go check out Instagram. Instagram's a blast. Anyway, if you follow the cast, follow content creators, it's a lot of fun. Instagram and Twitter are, I have a lot of fun on them. Basically every day, my family looks over them like Instagram, Twitter, and they just kind of guess. They figure out like where, who, which which platform am I looking at you to can find follow? Us on both. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Make sure to go follow these wonderful people on obviously their podcast, but also on social media. It's a lot of fun. And as a reminder, like I said, the other giveaway here is the watch party one. Make sure to go follow us on Twitch tomorrow night. We're gonna do like I said a little beta episode. It might not be the full thing, but we're just going to go have fun and try it out. But then once we have the schedule set, then you'll actually start to see regular episodes. Like I said, in our watch parties, they're going to be a lot of fun with from the dusty wheel. We even have a different studio. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> we're going to try to make it something completely different. Taylor and I are having a lot of fun with that. So, okay. Uh, and by the way, Roy just asked in chat, is there a link to buy it? A map so if yeah, we can get a link I'm doing right now okay cool if you can also send that to me i'll drop that in the description too okay yeah andy laugh designs.com perfect yep and so like we'll, I, just, we'll, I just i just threw it in the chat perfect and we'll get those we'll get the like i said we'll also get those in the description of the video after this hopefully if you've watched this after please like the video leave us a comment on what you thought was really funny from the dragonborn what were your favorite scenes from the dragonborn i want to i love getting answers from people that come later on and watch these things it's a lot of fun to find out what fans have basically held inside often for a long time so been like crazy. oh yeah how fast like two hours ago like i still have so much to say like so much that i didn't get to that I'm i know <laughs> i know <laughs> i know right there's uh, okay so we we definitely have to have you back and we do an after show and i don't know if the both of you have some time but we do an after show in discord so if you want to join us for an after after show in discord we'll have one of the chat rooms there be a non-spoiler one and if you have some comments we Yay! can continue this conversation That's right there part. so I yeah, never absolutely. get to be a part of all of this, you know, stuff. And so I thank you for putting this on so that I can be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like I said, we'll we'll make one of the chat rooms after this in Discord, you know, non-spoilerish. Uh, and so we'll do that after and we can continue this conversation over there. So like I said, you can find the link to Discord maybe in chat here if uh, Delusion, she's been <laughs> dropping the links all over the place. But if she hears this one, she'll drop that one in chat too. But you can find it in the description of the video also. Lots of links in the description. So you, thank you very much to the both of you. It's awesome to have you back. We should do this at the end of each of the books you're reading, right? I mean, this is, this should happen. Yes, so, please. People okay. have actually asked us if we were going to do episodes with recapping and predictions about, you know, the entire book that we finish. And we just, 
haven't gotten around to it and it doesn't really fit into what we're doing and so doing it here like i can't think of a better way to do this yeah, yeah. this is awesome let's do it yeah. uh, this was so much fun i will try maybe the next time we'll we'll, we'll tell everybody it's going to go two hours because we know we have so much material to cover <laughs> uh but i like that there's an after show and we can go have a conversation there and i like that just like jordan i like leaving you know something to be wanted in the uh, next no, book you know so, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you gotta yeah. leave a cliffhanger so that being said Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's been another fun episode. Be back here with us, Watt Wednesday, here at the Dusty Wheel. Like I said, look for links on Discord for Twitch this Monday. And then we actually have an episode. It's a debate on Sunday. So lots of stuff going on here at the Dusty Wheel. It's a crazy time. Yeah, it's a crazy time. It's a crazy time. So like we say around here at the Dusty Wheel, smash to black. You went right to kill it. Look at you, you're all ready. You're just done. I mean, this is like, uh, this is really the well. Um, and now I'm like, great, my turn, <laughs> And if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have, but he caution. didn't. So, okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. I just want to call me as like something along the lines of a Shadar Haran analog. For it creator. does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know, this is why like I have saying. Therese in the show because she's gonna correct everything that. Hey, everybody! I welcome to the Dusty Wheel we'll Show. What? Meme off challenge! Yay! Therese, like baby face, mounted on like a huge body. So like, all <laughs> this of is a not sudden, just a like, traditional wow. fantasy, right? There, there are sci-fi. And elements just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So let me get my guests in here with me, and <laughs> probably let's, I would let's say get, let's put in. 70, 80% of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.